My name is Eric Hoslin, Technical Marketing Engineer for Cisco Systems. I will discuss and demonstrate how the Cisco Secure Firewall integrates with the Azure Gateway Load Balancer. As the public cloud has evolved, the capabilities to do more advanced networking have expanded. A really good example of this is the Gateway Load Balancers. Gateway Load Balancers address the demand for inserting services into the data path without substantially reconfiguring the network. Now, which services? For us, that's going to mean firewalls. In particular, the Cisco Secure Firewall integrates with both the AWS and Azure a Gateway Load Balancer. Moving forward, we anticipate integration with Gateway Load Balancers as they are introduced by other public cloud providers. Please note, that although the motivation for the gateway load balancers is common across public cloud providers, implementation varies greatly. Let's focus on the Azure Gateway Load Balancer. It is associated with a public load balancer or with a VM that has a public IP address. In any case, there's a public IP address in the picture. The Gateway Load Balancer can transparently intercept the traffic. You don't have to make any changes to the Azure topology or to the routes. The traffic is received by the Public Load Balancer or the IP address of the virtual machine, and it is encapsulated over VXLAN over UDP encapsulation and sent to the firewalls through the Gateway Load Balancer. I want to emphasize that you do not configure routing between the public load balancer and the gateway load balancer. As a matter of fact, they can be in separate non-peered VNets. You associate the gateway load balancer with the public load balancer or the network interface on the virtual machine. The flow is fairly straightforward. A packet is received by the public load balancer and immediately encapsulated and sent to the gateway load balancer, which sends a traffic to the firewall. The firewall processes the traffic, returns it to the gateway load balancer, and it moves on to the internal servers. The outbound flow is essentially identical, but of course the steps are in the reverse order. The case of a virtual machine with a public IP address is essentially the same, and in fact this is what we will demonstrate. We will create and configure a gateway load balancer in the Azure portal, associate the gateway load balancer with the network interface of a web server, integrate the Cisco Secure Firewall with the gateway load balancer, and then confirm that the firewalls are indeed inspecting the traffic. Because we have to configure a VXLAN communication between the firewalls and the gateway load balancer, it's essentially you understand some basic VXLAN terminology to understand the configuration steps. The VTAP virtual tunnel endpoint is the interface that communicates between the firewall and the gateway load balancer. In our case, it will be the outside interface of the firewall. The NVE, the network virtual edge, actually performs the encapsulation, de-encapsulation, and the communication with the virtual tunnel endpoint. The VNI is the interface that actually receives and transmits the tunnel traffic. It is to this interface that you apply security policies on the firewall, and it specifies the NVE so that the NVE can encapsulate traffic and send it forward to the VTAP. Here we see the portal. Let's look for load balancers and add a load balancer. Notice a gateway load balancer is simply a skew of load balancers. There are no public or global gateway load balancers. Let's add a front-end IP address, which is typically an IP address on the network of the outside interfaces of the firewall. We might as well use a static IP to make configuration of the firewall simpler. Let's add the back-end pool. We can add this using the NIC or IP address. I prefer IP addresses to avoid conflicts with other ILTs in the network. We might as well use the default UDP ports and uh, segment IDs for the VXLANs. 
Now let's add the IP addresses of the outside interfaces of the firewall. For the inbound rule, we really don't have a lot of choices here. We only have one front end and we only have one a back end rule. And notice that HA ports is selected and grayed out, which means that all traffic will be forwarded to the firewall. Now we'd have to create a health probe. We, I prefer to use a TCP health probe on a non-standard board. So let's say 9443. This avoids conflicts with other traffic and makes it easier to troubleshoot. And there we go. Let's review and create the gateway load balancer. Now let's associate the gateway load balancer with the network interface of a virtual machine. Here's our web server in a different VNet, I might point out. And notice we can drill down to the network interface. And if we go to the IP configurations, we'll see that there is an attribute that we can set that points to the gateway load balancer that we just created. Now let's configure the firewalls themselves. Notice we have two firewalls here. There are a couple objects we need to complete the configuration. One is we need the, an object representing the Azure probe so that we can identify the probe as it comes into the firewall to check the health of the firewall. Another object that we're going to need is a zone for our VNI interfaces. We might as well call this VNI zone. It's this zone that will come into play as we configure our policies. We'll add the interfaces later. They actually don't exist yet. As far as the access policy is concerned, I'm going to keep this really simple. I'm going to create a rule that allows all traffic. So let's uh, go to zones and do the VNI zone. We're going to hairpin the traffic. So that's going to be both the source and destination. As far as logging, typically you log at the end of the connection. For the troubleshooting reasons, I like to log at both the beginning and end, at least while I'm configuring and testing the product. And there we go. So we'll be allowing the traffic, but at least we'll be logging it so we can analyze it. As far as the platform settings, these are needed to respond to the health pro. So we need to create some settings add the firewalls to that settings policy. And what we're going to do is we're going to get our HTTP server to respond to that port. Now we set the port to 9443, if you recall. But we don't want to keep that wide open. We can restrict that and say, we really only want to respond to the Azure probe on the outside interface. This will guarantee that we'll actually respond to the probe and be identified as healthy by the gateway load balancer. Notice that we're not going to create any NAP policies because none are needed for implementation with the gateway load balancer. So let's uh, edit one of the firewalls. We'll start with routing. You might have a default route already for the outside interface, but I'm going to assume we don't. And all we really need is a route to return the probe. The actual UDP traffic containing the encapsulated traffic will be coming from a local network. So we don't need any routing for that. And we could save the settings as we go, or we can wait till we do a lot of configuration and then save the settings. Let's go to the VTAP. We enable the NVE, which means we'll be able to encapsulate and de-encapsulate the VXLAN over UDP traffic. And we're going to specify the outside interface as the VTAP and specify the peer. This was the front end IP of the gateway load balancer. We now look at our interfaces and here's where we add the BNI interface that will be used 
to receive and transfer the traffic internally in the firewall. Remember, we created a zone for that, and we're going to use the UDP ports and VXLAN segment IDs that match what we have on the Kiwi Load Bouncer. And we use the defaults, so we use those here as well. And that's about it. Let's um, repeat this for the uh, second firewall, but I'll leave that out of the recording to save time. Once we've made those changes, we deploy them. Now there is a sort of an anomalous a warning that we're going to get. And when you get warnings, you have to go to the advanced deploy, which is actually kind of nice because you can see the changes you're making and so forth. Uh, but in particular, what we're going to see is that we tried to contact the gateway load balancer with ICMP and we couldn't find this VXLAN peer. That's because the gateway load balancer doesn't respond to ICMP, so we can ignore that warning and deploy the changes. Let's wait for the deployment to complete and see if we're receiving traffic on the firewalls. And sure enough, you can see that we're getting traffic. That's the IP address of the uh, web server, and we can drill down and get details about that traffic. Note it's also easy to confirm that we are load balancing the traffic between the two firewalls. And that concludes my demonstration. Thank you for your time. Thank you.